Thou hast wounded my heart, O my beloved. Thou hast wounded my heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we keep the feast or the office of Our Lady on Saturday with the commemoration of St. Giles, the Confessor, one of the twelve, or one of the Holy Helpers, and uh, also of the twelve Holy Brothers, Martyrs. Just yesterday we were honoring the great saint of charity, Raymond Nonnatus, who asked Our Lady to be his mother because he lost his mother in childbirth. And Our Lady especially did we honor under the title of Our Lady of Ransom or of Mercy. And her feast will come again at the end of this month to mark the close of all of the great feast days that make September really to be Mary's month above all. So how wonderful it is that this year we start September with a Saturday, the first Saturday devotion, our rosary, our communion of reparation, and our little meditation keeping Mary company, pondering with her some of the mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary. Today's saint is an ancient one who was once uh, very, very much loved and honored throughout the Church. I had the privilege of visiting the Basilica, the tomb of St. Giles, in southern France a few years ago, and uh, it was a sad thing to see that that uh, region of France is almost entirely Muslim now to consider that yesterday saint had to go to northern Africa to deal with the Muslims. But now, of course, they would be in the backyard of many Christians throughout the world. The coming chastisement, probably not so far off for us in this country. People worry about the Mexicans, but it's the Muslims to which they should really turn their concern. But we turn our eyes with great confidence to Our Lady for their conversion, and at the same time for our protection, even as she raised up her order of the Mercedarians in the past. We know that our Blessed Mother will protect us. St. Giles is considered by tradition to have been a noble Athenian by birth, who out of humility left his native land and went to what is today Provence or southern France. He lived as a hermit there for many years, uh, just eating herbs and, and the water, just what he could get right there, and giving himself up to the delight of divine contemplation, prayer, in solitude and silence. Uh, they say that at some point, hind from the uh, forest would come and provide its milk for its nourishment, and that when the king was hunting, some Frankish king, the king pursued the hind, the hind went to the cave where the hermit lived for protection, and an arrow went in after the animal, and the arrow hit St. Giles in the hand. When the king came to investigate what had happened to his prey, he met the hermit and was so taken with him that he returned three days successively to speak to him, and he resolved that he would found a monastery and that St. Giles would be the abbot of it, which he accepted to in a humble spirit of obedience. St. Giles then became one of the holy helper saints, the only one who wasn't actually a martyr, and he is invoked for all sorts of patronages and causes. He is prayed to on behalf of cripples, especially crippled or sick children. He is prayed to on behalf of babies who don't get a good night's sleep, who have bad dreams at night. He protects as well a youth growing up from the allurements of this world, and he helps all of us not to be ashamed of our faith, and also not to be ashamed of the sins that we weren't ashamed enough to com commit, that is to say, for the grace of making a good, honest confession. These are some of the causes St. Giles takes under his care. They say that when St. Giles was wounded, he never allowed the arrow wound in his hand to be dressed or taken care of that he wanted to bear that wound for the rest of his life because St. Paul said, I will glory in my infirmity. And if you think of it, we all have some wounds. 
whether they be of a physical nature or whether they be of a spiritual or perhaps an emotional nature, some weakness of ours that we don't seem to be able to help or heal or control. Perhaps despite our own good prayers and even our penances and our good intentions, ask St. Giles for his assistance. Remember the words that he quoted of St. Paul, I will glory in my infirmity. But there is another wound to which we should direct the mind's eye and our prayer this first Saturday of September. In the Canticle of Canticles, uh, the, the Old Testament, Solomon writes, Thou hast wounded my heart, my beloved. Thou hast wounded my heart. We must ask Our Lady, who bears not one but seven wounds made by the swords of her sorrows, for our hearts at long last to be wounded, not as they usually are out of pride or human feeling or some hurt feeling, something like that, but for our hearts to be wounded with God's love and for that wound never to heal, never to recover. That is to say that with Mary there be some part of us which is always suffering out of our intense love for our Lord. The trouble is that usually these are pious words in a church on a Saturday morning or a Sunday, and it's hard to remember them all week long when the little slings and arrows of outrageous fortune come our way and our pride gets ruffled or our feathers and the rest of it. But we ask Our Lady today, because this is her month and this is her day, to wound our heart with the fire of God's love and not to let it heal. And then those other things which we never seem to be able to get rid of or recover from, they'll take their role, they'll find their place. They won't keep us from loving God anymore, but they'll be all part of that divine plan which, as St. Giles said, quoting St. Paul, enable us to glory in our own weakness so that we may the glory in the strength of our Lord. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.